Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 5 for chapter 3. In this video, we explore relations between the solutions of second order linear equations and the Voronskian of them, that is, and the linear dependency of these two solutions. Let's begin with the theorem. So the theorem says, now, we are given a second-order linear equation with the homogeneous right-hand side, that is zero. And suppose now we have found two solutions. One is y1, the other is y2. Then we have the following. Part 1. We have either the Voronskian of y1, y2 is identically zero or is never zero. So this means y1 and y2 are either linearly independent or linearly dependent. Part 2. In the case where the Voronskian is never zero, that means y1 and y2 are two linearly independent functions. Then we can form the general solution by making a linear combination of these two. So y equal c1y1 plus c2y2 is the general solution. Here c1 and c2 are two arbitrary constant. And this set of solutions, y1 and y2, which are now linearly independent, they are also called to form a fundamental set of solutions for this homogeneous differential equation. As a consequence of the previous statement here, then if you are given any initial conditions, that is, y at t0 is given, and y prime at t0 is given. Then there is a unique set of values for the constants c1 and c2 that will give a unique solution. Okay, so this means uh, for a set of number y0, y0 bar that are given, it associates to a unique set of solutions for c1 and c2 when you try to find them. Now let's give a proof for part two of the theorem. That is, for a given set of initial value, y0 and y0 bar, there is a unique solution for c1 and c2. Okay, so let's plug in these initial conditions. That is, y at t0 is y0. So this is y at t0, that is putting t0 for t. And then y prime at t0 is y0 bar. So that's the second equation. So the constants c1 and c2 are our unknowns. And then these y1, y2 value at t0 are given numbers. And now we want to solve this system of linear equations to find the value of c1 and c2. It would be convenient to rewrite these two equations using a matrix vector form. So if we form the unknown matrix c1 and c2 here, then the coefficients in front of them can be placed in the coefficient matrix, which is 2 by 2 here. So this matrix times the unknown equals to a load vector on the right hand side. And then we will be solving something like an, a matrix A times x equals b, where this is our x, this is our b, and that's the coefficient matrix A. And now we know that from linear algebra, um, the condition for this system to have a unique solution is that the determinant of the coefficient matrix is not zero. So the determinant of this is not zero. 
and then we see that the determinant of this is exactly the Brunskian of y1, y2 evaluated at t naught, and we assume that the Brunskian is never zero for any t value. So this is never zero, and therefore this has a unique solution, meaning for a any given y not y not bar, there is a unique solution of c1 and c2. And that's exactly what is stated in part 2, so we completed the proof. Now currently we will leave open the proof for part 1 and we'll come back to it. Let's now take an example. So here's the example. I want you to show that two functions y1 and y2 where y1 is square root of x and y2 is 1 over x, that they would form a fundamental set of solutions for this equation, 2 t square y double prime plus 3 t y prime plus y equals 0 for t bigger than 0. So there are um, two steps one needs to take. The first one would be plug y1, y2 into the equation to see that they are actually solutions. And that is a straightforward step, so I will skip the details. And you can work that out easily. Once you have shown y1 and y2 are solutions, and then in order to them to form a fundamental set of solutions, we need to show that they are linearly independent. Namely, we can compute the Brunskian and to see that if it's not zero. Okay, and that is a rather simple computation. We can compute that. Brunskian is uh, just the determinant of the matrix y1, y2, and then y1 prime, y2 prime. And you compute that and you get this function here. It's a function of t. And then we see that it is strictly less than zero. It will be never than and equal to zero for t bigger than zero because that's the part we're interested in. And then therefore y1, y2 are linearly independent and they can form a fundamental set of solutions for the differential equation. Now the next theorem is uh, probably the most important one in this chapter. It carries the name of a famous Norwegian mathematician Arbo. So we call this Arbo theorem. Let's give the statement first. So let now again y1 and y2 be two linearly independent solutions to the homogeneous linear second order equation. Okay, so if we say two solutions for the equation from now on, we will imply that they are linearly independent because otherwise they are basically the same solution and it's not interesting to talk about them as a set. Okay, so let's say they are linearly independent and then given on an open interval which we call interval i. Then if you compute the Voronskian of this on this interval i, and you know they are never zero, but for this equation it will take a specific form, that is the Voronskian equals to the exponential of the integral of negative p dt and multiplied by some constant c. Okay. So note that this negative p here is the coefficient here in front of y prime and you can put that in if the equation is in this standard form where the coefficient in front of y double prime is 1. So here the constant c would depend on the solution y1 and y2 um, but independent on t or on the interval i. Okay, so um, let me comment on this dependence. So if you have y1, y2, let's just take y1, that say it's a solution for this equation, then you can 
multiply y1 by any constant and it's another solution. So you can take different forms of y1 and therefore it will affect this constant here. Okay, and the same thing happens to y2. So constant c will depend on the specific choice of y1 and y2, but it shall be independent of the other parameters in the theorem. Now we remark that um, if this theorem is true, which we will prove, then this theorem proves part one of the previous theorem. Okay, so the previous theorem says the two solution y1, y2, the Voronskian is either identically zero or never zero. So, and then if you have proved Albert theorem, then you know the Voronskian of two solutions equal to this expression. So here the expression for the um, um, exponential function of this integral, that is never zero. So you have two situations here. One is the constant c is zero, then the Voronskian is zero, and then the two functions are actually linearly dependent. And then the second case is when this constant c is not zero, then this expression would never be zero. Okay, so um, let's see now how we can prove this theorem. Okay, let's give a proof. It's um, not too complicated, so let's try that. Okay, so y1, y2 are two solutions, so they will both satisfy the equation. So let's plug in and the equation should hold. So here we plug in y1 in the equation and it holds, and then here we plug in y2 in the equation and it holds. So we have two equations now. Now let's do some manipulation. We will multiply the first equation here by negative y2 and we multiply the second equation by y1. Okay, So negative y2 is multiplied on each term and it's zero and then y1 is multiplied on each term here and then the right hand side is still zero. And then we will add up the two equations. Okay, So what you will have, okay, what we write here is the term by term summation. So we see if we add up these two terms, you will get y1 times y2 double prime, and then this term will be negative y1 double prime times y2. So we put here. And then for the second term, this will be negative y2 y1 prime times pt, and this will be a y2 prime y1 times pt. So we take out the pt and we put the terms involving y here. And the third term, if you multiply this by negative y2 and this by y1, they become the same with the opposite side, so they cancel, it's therefore nothing, and the right hand side is zero. So we have this equation, which involves both y1 and y2. Okay, so let's recall what is the Voronskian of y1 and y2. It is y1, y2 prime minus y1 prime, y2. And we spot immediately it's exactly this term. Okay, and then what is the derivative of the Voronskian? Okay, one can differentiate this one more time and use the product rule for each term. This will give you y1, y2 double prime, which is here, and then plus another term, y1 prime, y2 prime. And then this you will get y1 prime, y2 prime negative, which cancels that term, so it's gone. And then you will have y1 double prime, y2, which we carry here. And then we see that, beautifully, this term appears here. That's exactly this term. Okay, so put in these um, observations and we obtain the equation. So this is w prime plus pt times w equals zero. Voila, we see that it's exactly a first order linear equation for the Voronskian w. And that equation we know we can solve. 
Now you may want to pause the video and go and solve it using um, your knowledge, like the method of the integrating factors or whichever you like. Okay, and you solve it and dot dot dot, and then we have this expression, which is exactly um, as stated in the Arbor theorem. Okay, so now this completes the proof. Um, now I would like to um, apologize to the viewers of my habit of, as a mathematician, of uh, solving one situation and then later on reduce the situation we are faced in into the situation that we already knew how to do it and then I would do not repeat the details like here and then I just say this we know how to handle and I give you the solution. If you have taken more math courses you might have noticed this is rather a common habit for mathematicians. Now let me end the video with a, a nice little joke on that topic. So it says that, legend says, once upon a time, a mathematician and an engineer somehow got stranded on an island. And they were very hungry and very thirsty, so they were looking for food. And they searched and they found two coconut trees. Let's call them tree A and tree B. The engineer, being the handyman usually, and climb up on tree A and manage to take down the coconut and then managed with a stone and whatever handy tool he could find to open it and the two of them happily devoured this delicious coconut and the mathematician now he's very happy so he climbed up on tree B managed to take down that coconut and then he climbed back up on tree A and fixed the coconut on tree A and then he came down. Then he happily told the engineer, ha, ah, now we reduced this to a problem that we know how to solve. Okay, so um, that is all I want to say in this video and in the next video we'll have an examples of using Arbo theory in various um, situations. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you next time.